Hello Python programmers, this is AK. In this video, I'm going to explain one data project which is about RFM analysis. So people who already know about RFM, you can skip this part of video and if you don't know about the concept of RFM, then it is for you. RFM is briefly called as Recency Frequency Monetary Analysis. Mainly it is used for segmenting the customers of your business. With this analysis, you can easily identify which customers are more interested in your business and you can categorize the customers based on how recently they are purchasing the product from you and how frequently they are making the business with you and how much revenue they are spending on your business. So based on these three scores, we will calculate the RFM score. It will tell you which customers are potential customers and which customers are losing from your business and other more important KPIs also we can collect. So this is our use case right now. RFM is one of the best for marketing and customer segmentation. Many big companies are using RFM to managing their customers. Here I already did this project from the scratch with the help of Azure Data Factory and Spark. I will explain the project step by step. So watch this video fully to understand the important principles of this project. And before that, if you are new to my channel and if you want to see more content, then subscribe to my channel and like this video for more informative data contents. It will be very helpful for me to push more content from my side and let's get started. So for doing the RFM, we need some store or e-commerce business data for RFM calculation. For the data collection, I used Kaggle for this project and then for processing the data, I used two different types of Azure services. The first one is Azure Data Factory and next one is Databricks. In the Azure Data Factory, I constructed a pipeline with Azure Data Flow and Databricks. In the Azure Data Flow, I did the basic data processing and in the Azure Data Bricks, I did some high scale data processing. Once the basic data processing is finished from data flow, it will be transferred to the data lake and next the Databricks code will take the data and it process the business results. So first I'm going to explain the basic data processing and then I'm going forward to the Azure Data Bricks. So before that, you have to know what is Azure Data Flows. Azure Data Flows providing us the graphical interface so you can perform the aggregations and major sort of calculations on data flow itself. So it is more conservative. That's why many of the data engineers who are using Azure use data flows for basic transformations. Here I did the same for my basic filtrations and transformations. And let's see what are the data flows that I inserted. So look at the data flows here. First I selected the source. The source would be my the data that I downloaded from the Kaggle. And for connecting the source, we should have to create the linked service. And if you don't know about how to create a linked service, then you should watch this video for better understanding. So here I already created a dataset linked service and I named it as a invoice data. After that, I made three split based on some conditions because this invoice data contains lot of country data and we are not going to use all the country here. Our objective is to filter the major country which has more invoice processing transactions. So in this data set, I already gathered the information the UK country has more invoices than other countries. So I took the UK country for data processing. So after that, I did the same for the price and quantity. The price and quantity are important features here and there will be no zero price and quantity could be ordered by any customers. If any price and quantity column has zero, then it could be an outlier and we don't want the outlier in our data set. So I made here two conditional split and, if, and filtering the values which are greater than the zero on both price and quantity columns. Once it is filtered, our next step is to filter the null values on the entire data. So I dragged the filter flow and set the condition as not null. So basically it will filter out the null values from the data. After that, I put my transformed data into a sync flow. So sync flow is like a destination where our data will get stored. Here my data will be stored on data lake output folder. So this is the end of the basic transformation and let's move to the Databricks. In the Databricks, I already wrote the code here. Let me explain the Spark code so you will get to know better. I think you already know about the Spark framework and if you don't have any idea about the Spark framework then check out this video for better understanding. I already mounted my data lake into Databricks. So these are the code which are required for mounting the data lake with the Databricks. But remember one thing, you should command the mounting code when you attach this script with main pipeline. So after the basic data processing, these are the columns left for the Databricks data processing. So you can see here in the customer ID, we have the null values are recorded, but we filter out the null values in the, the data flows. But somehow it is not worked in the customer ID. Here I wrote the Spark code, which will uh, drop the null values in the customer column. So look at that, we have zero null records and we are good to process the data for the RFM analysis. I started with the invoice dates here because the invoice contains the timestamps data. 
So what I did here is I used pandas to convert the Spark data frame into pandas and I used data functions on pandas data frame to separate the date fields from the data. After separating the dates, again I am converting the pandas data frame into a Spark data frame. The problem here is we can use Spark to separate the dates but, but I tried Spark functions for the date fields conversion but still it is hard for me to understand the syntaxes. That's why I used pandas to operate the date conversion here. So in the next cell, I wrote the code for calculating the total sales. So it is one of the important KPA for calculating the monetary values, which is associated with RFM. For calculating the total sales, I multiplied the unit price and quantity columns to get the total sales values. So once we calculated the total sales, we have to find out the new column called duration. For calculation of this column, I took the max invoice date and then I used the date difference built-in function from Spark to find out the duration from every date in the invoice date column. So once we get the duration, then it is easy for us to calculate the recency values. Here I did the group by on customer ID and then I did the aggregations on duration column to find out the recency score. Same way for the frequency, I counted the customer ID to know the frequency of orders that they generated. And for the monetary values, I did the sum of total sales to know the monetary values of each customers. And next, for calculating the score of each values, I made multiple UDF here. So this will explain the major part of the concept. See the R score here, if the R value is within the 2 weeks then it should be 1. So the meaning of the R value here is, if customer made any transaction within 2 weeks then we should segment the customer as a 1 value and if it is 1 month period then it should be 2 range and if it is 3 month period then it should be in 3 range. So this is how we are categorizing the customers. So I followed different numbers for rest of the two KPIs. I leave the source of this code in the description and if you want the code you can go and check the link of this code. So these are all the user defined functions that I made. So in the Spark if you want to register any UDF function you should have to follow this code snippet. In this code snippet you should mention the UDF method from Spark and then the written data type of those UDFs you have created. So this is the procedure for creating a UDF in Spark. Next I applied the UDFs on the data that we have. Here I applied R UDF on recency column, it will bring the R score and F UDF on frequency column, it will bring the F score and then M UDF will bring M score. Now we have the scores. Based on these scores, we can segment the customers. Like take the first column, the R score is 2 and F score is 3 and M score is 1. So how we can interpret this data? So in the two weeks of duration, they made 7 transactions. It generated 5178 amount. So this customer is making a lot of transactions within two weeks of period. So this customer is considered to be a potential customer for, for the business. As a business owner, we should give him more number of offers to the customer to make him to do more transactions with us. So this is how we should see this data and improve the business. And this approach will be more applicable on any business. So you can use this RFM approach on modern day business to bring more insights to the company. So that's all about this video and if you like this video give a like and subscribe and share for more updates. Thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next week.